Hello, 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 everybody. It's Lucy Kelleher, and I am here tonight to show you. Um, a couple of people had asked how I made the Halloween treat bags, and um, I wanted to make some for Thanksgiving for the Thanksgiving table, and I thought, why don't I show you how I made them? I was able to decorate this one a little more than the other one. I was in a crunch, and I had to do like, make like 40 of them. And so... Um, I'm not sure if this is the way it's going to end up in terms of decorations or embellishments, but for now, I think that's what it's going to be. I might get a little turkey cut out or something, but I don't know yet. So what I did was I'm using the More Than Autumn paper, and no, I'm sorry, it's called Sweet Days of Autumn paper, so I wanted to show that to you. It's really pretty paper, and... What I like about our DSPs is that um, if you don't necessarily care for, it can really use a lot of a certain theme that the paper is. Well, guess what? On the other side, there's other designs. So like on this one is this really pretty leaves, which is the one, or trees and leaves. So that's what I did for my bag. Um, the one side is these cute little forest critters, you know, bear and lamb and fox and birds and all the things and then like I said the other side are these pretty like trees and you get let's see you got four of those or three of those then I mean look at this really pretty paper um this little checked pattern the other side and um, little like diamonds but you could they could look like trees um but aren't those pretty so there's those and then Look at this fabulous pattern on the back here and then on the other side. So if you, hi Beth, um, I can see, I can actually see some comments tonight. Hi Beth. Um, so like I said, when you look at some of our DSPs and you might be going, oh, I don't know about that theme. I don't know if I could use all of those papers because I don't have like hiking papers or whatever, right? Remember, there's always a really cool backside that's a little different, okay? So that's the paper that is called Sweet Days of Autumn, and it's number 166498, and it coordinates with a lot of cool, fun colors. So here's the easy, easy way to make these little, cute little treat bags, okay? So you're going to take paper that's six by six. Now, we sell a lot of six by six papers, um, so you could buy six by six. So if you wanted to do this for Thanksgiving or birthdays or Christmas, whatever, um, you could do that. Or you can do what I did was I took the 12 by 12 piece and cut it into four. So every 12 by 12 piece of paper will give you two uh, treat boxes or treat bags. So what you're going to do, and if you've watched prior um, <laughs> lives that I did, um, I... Okay, this is a really cool cutter, and this was a close to my heart one, but it's the same brand and type as the Stampin' Up! one, right? So I, I use them alternately depending on what I have near me. So one day, it has a cutting blade and a scoring blade, okay? I, for some reason, got it into my head that I'm going to take out the scoring blade for some reason, lost it then for several months, and then I found it, and now I can't get it back in the track. So it just sits here. <laughs> but what's kind of cool is I can show you a way, if you just have a cutter without a score, I can show you how you can use your cutter to score your paper because, you know, maybe you don't. Or you're like me and you lost it. Okay, so you take your 6x6 six six paper. Oh, cool, Beth, you have a Christmas paper. Perfect. Wouldn't these make cute little, like, um treat bags you don't even have to put just cookies in there or sorry candy in there you could put cookies put some wax paper inside and then put the cookies you could slide a gift card you could do some tissue and put some gift card uh in there i mean this would be really cute even for if you have teachers or coaches uh fellow office workers or people on your teams and you want to give them something really cute um you don't want to go too crazy since um bags can be so expensive um at any rate, you're going to take your six by six, and to make one bag, you're going to need two sheets of 12 by 12, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your pattern. So on this one, I have the leaves and trees as my outside. If I was going to do the animals, it actually kind of wouldn't matter because the animals are in all different directions. But because I want 
the trees and the leaves to be facing upward, I want to make sure that the paper that uh, where it folds down is in the right direction. So I'm going to turn this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to score this paper four times. The first one, which is the top, right, which is going to be this fold, is at one inch. So I'm just going to line it with one inch, take my bone folder, and just slide down like that once or twice. You don't want to go too hard, because um, if you go too hard, you might tear your paper. Okay, then I'm going to turn my paper, and now every other side, the other three sides, are going to be at one and a half. Okay, so then I'm going to do one and a half. And I always usually score twice. I'm going to flip it again, do one and a half. If you don't have a bone folder, if you have something that has a, like, po uh, not a point, because you don't want to cut the paper, but something like with a bald edge, uh, like a little ball at the end of it, but it's tiny, you can use that. I don't know what that would be, but there is such a thing, I think, so... <laughs> Um, so then again, I'm going to do this one and a half. Okay, what I did to the one piece, I'm now going to make the second piece. So again, I want my direction of the bag to be up and down so the pattern's correct. So I'm going to turn this. I'm going to score it one, and that's going to be my flip, my flap. Okay, so one, two, then I'm going to rotate. Then I'm going to do one and a half for the other three sides. So just like this, whoops, and again, do, 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 like this, and one last time. And I can also write the directions in the comments, or I'll put it in the, um, in the section um, after this goes live. Okay, so I've got all those, so now I can put this away. I am done with my coda. So now what I want to do is I want to do my folds, okay? So there's the one inch. I'm going to fold over, take my bone folder, do that. You can even use your fingers. And I want to make sure, now remember, when we cut and then when we score, they may not always line up perfectly, right? And so what you can do is I just kind of line it up there, there, and then I press down. So I want to make sure they're pretty dead on right so I do each side like this yep okay and then I have this will be end up being the bottom and you'll see when you score right there's a fold there so again I'm just making sure it kind of lines up okay so that's one I'm gonna fold that over do the same now with number two right so I'm just gonna make sure because I want crisp edges, so you can see how those edges are really crisp. And then I'm going to do the other one. So again, it's two six by six papers. You could use cardstock. You don't necessarily have to use pattern paper. And if you use cardstock, you can then, you know, the bags can be different colors. You can add stickers. You can add ephemera. You could take your cardstock and stamp images on it tone on tone. So, for example, you know, if you had a cardstock that was, say, you know, Mossy Meadow, you could grab some images. Like, um, I use the Grateful from Iconic Imagery. But you see, this one has, like, leaves and snowflakes and hearts and little trees, but, you know, you could take that tree stamp and take Mossy Meadow ink and on the Mossy Meadow cardstock, just stamp randomly if you wanted, right? So you don't have to just do pattern paper. You can do cardstock. You don't even have to stamp on that cardstock. You can also, like I said, just add stickers or just decorate the front, right? It's really up to you. Okay, so let me keep going here because this actually doesn't take as long as you might think, but when I start talking, <laughs> because that's what I do. I usually actually have music in the background, but the problem is Facebook has a thing about copyright, and so if the music's playing in the background, they stop the uh, the live, or they'll uh, won't you upload. So, yeah, go figure. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to use, like I said, the trees and the leaves. I folded over my, my uh, lid, or my flap, and now I'm going to make sure that this is a pretty crisp fold. Double check over here. Right, I want to get it up here, and I might have to 
adjust. So there's that. Okay. Now I'm going to do the other side. Fold it over. Slide it down. And one more time on this side. Yeah, and you might have to adjust a little bit um, to make sure that it's flat. And that's okay, right? Because paper's fairly malleable. Okay, now, you can do this order one of a couple of different ways. And you can also use different adhesives. The ones I made for Halloween, I used this this uh, mono liquid glue in the, in the green. This one, I just grabbed some of our tear tape and did that. So it's really up to you. Um, so when this is folded over, what I want to do is I want to fold, I want to um, adhere these edges. So I'm just going to grab, hopefully this isn't stuck. And I'm just going to put a little glue on the sides. And remember, because this is liquid glue, it's going to mush, uh, mush, smush, <laughs> mush. Um, and so if you go too far or close to the edge, it'll smoosh out. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that over. Do this just to make sure it stays, and then just use my uh, bone folder again. If you don't have a bone folder, just use your fingers. Okay, so that's one. And here's two. Okay, and again, I'm going to turn this over. Whoops. Turn it over, bring it in, and do this. And then we're going to do a little cutting before we adhere the rest of this. Okay. So I'm going to grab my scissors. Now, remember here we have this bottom. I don't know if you can see. If you can see that fold. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, and I'm going to do the same thing to both pieces. Okay? I'm going to cut up until that first uh, bend or first crease on that crease. You see that right there? Or on that fold. So just, all I'm going to do is grab my scissors and just cut right to the edge. Turn it over. And do the same here just like that what we do to one we do to the other again grab it and cut right there and again here and I just want to make sure I have that crease okay so that's the so far now this is where it changes we're gonna do some cutting on both of these again but we're gonna do different cutting so on one piece, I'm going to actually cut on the sides, okay? So you see this flap that's hanging down? I'm going to cut that piece, not this piece. I actually did that on one of my Halloween ones, and it kind of messed things up. The person who got it couldn't tell because of the papers, but I knew it was there. So you're going to cut this flap, and you're just going to cut a, at a diagonal up into that corner right there. doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to measure it. This is going to be inside, so no one's going to see it, right? Now I'm going to do the same thing, and again, not over here, but the flap, okay? Same idea, so I just eyeball it, go right to that corner, okay? So that's one. The other one, all right, so this one we cut the sides. This time we're going to cut off the bottom, okay? And we're going to cut from here down. And this whole thing is going to come off. This flap is actually going to come off on this side. So again, I'm going to cut to the corner approximately. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be inside. So you don't have to worry about making sure they're the same. Okay. So see what we have here. Same on the top, different on the bottom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, let's slide this out of the way. I'm going to flip these over. Okay. The one with the shorter flap, uh, it's easier for me. I do it on the right-hand side um, just because of the way I do glue and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the this, this is the inside of my bag, right? This is the outside. This is the inside. I'm going to line these up and get it as close as possible, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on this piece and then we're going to glue it down just like that, okay? If you have your... Tear, uh, tear tape, you're just going to put tear tape around the whole thing. I'm using this uh, liquid glue. So I'm just going to scooch it around. Again, I'm going to line this up as closely as I can. I do want them flush against each other, not overlapping. And there, just going to turn that over just like that and hold. And you'll see it fits perfectly, right? Because remember, we scored at one and a half 
all three sides. So this one's one and a half. This one's one and a half. So this will match up. Okay. So we do that. Then we're going to fold these flaps in. And we're now going to adhere again. So take your glue or your um, tear tape. Your tear tape will just go around the edges. This glue is just going to go here and here because it mushes out. And what I'm going to do, lift this up. Line up the edge, and there we go. Right, so it's just going to glue like that. Same with this one. Goes in. Lines up, so you got a little extra glue there. So we're just making sure they're lined up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, it should be kind of perfect. Okay, just like that. Then we've got our outsides. Now you can do one of two things with this. When you fold, these flaps can go on the outside, or those flaps can go on the inside. Now, what I have found when I put these together is that sometimes, no matter how perfect I think I have scored and measured and cut, this is what, this is what happens, right? Now, I could probably pull it up when I adhere it, but, you know, it just kind of bothers me. And the person who gets this isn't going to notice, but I know. So I normally glue them on the outside like that. And so then if it is um, lower, it's harder to tell. So what I'm going to do then, I've got these sides. Again, I'm going to put the adhesive here on this flap, adhesive on this flap. If I'm using tear tape, you're just going to go down and across. You want it on all sides. Since I'm using this glue, just going to, whoops, no, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to see, get some glue here. And then we're going to do the other side. Okay, remember, because it's liquid glue, it smooshes. Now I'm just going to bring them together. Line it up. And I can play around with it a little bit because the other thing, too, when you use the tear tape, once it's down and you connect this, it usually stays. It's hard to pull apart. But with this, it's a little easier to move it around. Line it up. And that's it. That is how easy this is to do, ladies. Boom. Cute little treat bag. And again, the size, what's completed size is like three and a half up. And let's see here. One, two, three and a half. Yeah, it's three and a half. Is that right? Three and a half by three and a half. No, that's not right. <laughs> three and a half. No, no. Three and a half by oh here we go three <laughs> i was measuring the same side twice oh my goodness right so this is a three and a half by a three so gift card would fit in there with some tissue like i said you could put in um wax paper because again cookies or um, any baked goods are gonna have a little like grease or whatever to them so you just put some wax paper in and put the cookies in here this would fit two three Cookies, you can put candies in here. You can do little uh, treats of any kind, honestly. Um, even, um, I don't know, you guys can probably come up with some great ideas and you can comment below. Oh, hi, Dolores. See, some of my comments are popping up, some of them out, so I'll catch them out when we get there. So yeah, that's just how quick and easy. So I thought, what a cute thing this would be for the Thanksgiving table, right? You could have a word on one side. You could, if you have seating, and you want people to sit in certain places. Oh, a Hershey bar. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but you can, uh, put the, like a grateful here or a sentiment like that on the other side. You can put their name, right? And that could be theirs. And then that way, if you want people to get different things, like for me at the dinner table, uh, for desserts or snackies for the holidays, um, you know, my favorite treat would be mini Reese's peanut butter cups. And I wouldn't want anyone else to get my Reese's peanut butter cups. So, you know, um, now, what did I use for this here? I used, so like I said, for the sentiment and these leaves, I used Iconic Imagery um, because this is kind of a cool set that's uh, for the holidays. But That's that grateful right there. And look how crisp that stamp is. I mean, so cool. So I used that. And then let's see, do I have, I can tell you. Oh, yeah. So for the tag, I just used Labeled with Love Dyes. What I liked about this, there's three in a pack. So if you want to make a bunch of these, instead of having a die cut, one, two, right? What I did was I took a piece of cardstock, 
doubled it, put all three so that when I ran it through, I got six at a time. It'll cut through two at a time. I'm not sure if it'll cut through three pieces of cardstock, but I know it'll cut through two. So with every pass, you could get six of these, like little ticket um, shapes, right? And then, like I said, I'm, I may change this out a little bit. I may, and these are just little leaves that were like... Um, the frame and then the actual stamp. So um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. And you can see this one, I did not... Oh, look at that. See, that's why you don't leave stuff on your table. Um, this one, I liked it better, I think, with the edging versus the not edging. So let me show you without the edging. Let me show you with that edging. So if you could comment below maybe which way you like better. Do you like edging or not? And all I did for that is I just took my sponge. I took the same color. And this happened to be Mossy Meadow, which is one of the coordinating colors. Dab, dab, dab. And just... See, there's still some ink on here. Just like that. Now, the reason I don't use a blending brush is it, the color is harder to control and you might get too much. You could also just do DTP, which is direct paper, do it against the ink pad like this. Um, but then it's going to be just the edges. You're not going to see any come on top of the paper. So personal preference, right? You may like that. You may just want some emphasis on the edge. So that's all I did. See, then once I start out, you can kind of see it. But now I can add more color, right? And add just enough. You can add, you can't take away. <laughs> so if you're a teacher, right, you know what I'm talking about. So like right here, do you see how I did that little schmear because I left this on the table? If I end up using this, I, I will probably, I may just take my embellishing thread and put it like right there, right? Or I may take a leaf. Let's see here. I mean, I can even take a leaf, you know, do something like that, maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's just how quick and easy this project is. And um, it'd be a lot of fun for, like I said, and this is year round. You can use these little bags, teacher gifts, coaches gifts, friends, family, work, uh, secret Santas, right? I think with secret Santa, some places they do like uh, three or four, like for a whole week, everyone gets a little something. I mean, how cute to put just a little something in here, a little something, something inside. Um, but yeah, that's our treat bag. Um, and um, I'm going to come up with some other ideas for treat bags or gift card holders, and I'll be going back live. If there's anything you'd like to see made, um, comment below, comment in the group, send me a message. Um, if you see anything in the catalog or online uh, that you think, you know what, that'd be really cool. How do you make that? Um, and oh, by the way, today, uh, if you haven't gone on to my website yet, they dropped, they, we, um, two new kits of the month and some really fun papers and stamp sets and embellishments and that kind of thing. So I may go live later in the week and show you some of this stuff. All right, guys, I hope you're having a good night and thanks for popping on. Uh, let me know if you're watching live replay and where you're watching from. Um, and some of the comments popped up, some of them didn't, so I will go back and respond. Have a fabulous night. Lucy Keller, Stampin' Up. Thank you so much. I'm out.